Hey, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I would love to have you subscribe, like, comment, and if you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. So in today's video, I thought it would be really fun to do like a get ready with me using products that I just love, adore, and enjoy using. Um, some of these products I have never used on my channel before, some I've used multiple times, um, but I just thought it would be fun to use products that I know really well and that I just really love. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a little bit of a story time because you know me, I can't just put my makeup on without telling you guys some stories. So if you're interested to see what products I love using, uh, what I use for my foundation, blush, bronzer, highlighter, lipstick, mascara, eyeliner, eyeshadow, primer, powder, oh my gosh, <laughs> and you want to hear a story, then please sit back, relax, and let's get started. Okay, let's get started with this look. Like I said in the intro, all of the products that I'm going to be using in this look today are products that I just really love and adore and really enjoy using. And this is also going to be story time. A few of you have said in my comment section that you really like my storytelling skills. So this is all your fault. I'm just kidding. And I've already done my brows and I've tried my eyelids. I use the ABH primer and for my brows, I use the, uh, this is the Maybelline New York Brow Define and Fill Duo. There's like a pencil edge on one side and then like a squishy little sponge on the other. I don't use the squishy little sponge. I just use the pencil. It's a little dark for me, but I really like the consistency of it and it lasts on my brows really well. And then of course I just use some clear brow gel over the top of that. And for my palette today, I'm going to be using the NYX Utopia Ultimate Utopia palette. I love this palette so much. And I think I'm going to do like a mm, burgundy and green combo. I think I'll start off with this shade here first and put that in my outer V and grab a brush and just have this cute little brush here. And so I know that I've already shared with you guys my falls and my back surgeries, but there's more. Oh, there's more. And there's more with my kids too, because of course I gave them the genetic code for accident proneness. Good job, mom. So uh, I'll start with me and I'll tell you about my little uh, fun little accidents that I've had. Um, it started when I was four. Um, I took ballet class, uh, not to become like a prima ballerina, but just because it was fun. And I liked wearing the tutu and the ballet slippers. And we had like a formal living room. That was really common like in the 70s and 80s. Like now you have that kind of grand room concept. Well, back then you had like a formal living room that like didn't have a TV, kind of off uh, on its own, kind of away from the main house. And we had this beautiful brick fireplace that basically spanned like one entire wall of the room. Um, I mean, the fireplace didn't, but like the whole wall was brick. And then the fireplace itself was really beautiful and kind of ornate. It had like this chainmail screen that went over the front of it. And then there was like bookshelves built into the brick on either side of the fireplace. And then there was this really cool brick hearth that came out that spanned the length of the wall and then also came out quite a ways into the room. And so that was my stage. <laughs> I would sing, dance, puppet shows, comedy routines, whatever. And during this time of my life, it was for my ballet practice. And my uncle, my mom's brother, was really into making like metal sculptures. And he had made her this really cool metal patchwork moon, like crescent moon. And it was hanging from the ceiling right above the fireplace. And my mom would always say, I want you to do your, whatever you're doing on either side of that moon. Do not get underneath that because it had a really thick, sharp edge. And you know, you know where this is going. So I was practicing my ballet leaps on the hearth and jumped right into that moon, just wham. And I still actually have a dent right here in my head. I don't know if you can tell my finger dipping in, but yes, I still have a dent. Cut my head open, had to have, I think, 10, eight to 10 stitches. So that was injury number one. And then when I was five, a year later, uh, my parents were both school teachers. Um, my dad was a like social studies teacher at the high school and that's like history. And my mom taught at the middle school level. So they were like kind of the teaching power couple. And this is not the dad that I refer to in my other videos. My parents got divorced when I was 10 and I haven't seen my biological dad since I was 18. That's a whole nother video topic. But, um, but at this time of life, you know, everything was going pretty well. <laughs> And uh, my dad was also the track coach and the football coach. And during this incident, he was uh, coaching track at that time. And he, uh, I just remember I was sitting at the kitchen table and we were getting ready to go to his track banquet. They had one at the end of every track season. And 
he was late getting home from work in a huge hurry. I'm going to go into this shade here, this kind of mauvey pink shade and blend that out. Um, and I just remember I was sitting at the kitchen table and he came into the kitchen and dropped an X-Acto knife on the kitchen table and was like, okay, let's go, let's go. And of course, like the squirrel and over the hedge, I'm like, ooh, silver, shiny, dangerous. What is that? I have to touch it. <laughs> My mom's like, you can't leave that lane there. She's going to pick it up and play with it and cut her fingers off. And the reason why he had it was because back then, uh, in 1979, uh, they didn't use like whiteout. I don't even think whiteout has had been invented yet to like erase mistakes when you would type. You would basically just take the blade of the X-Acto knife and just kind of scratch off the letter that you'd screwed up. And an X-Acto knife is basically just like, it looks like a little box cutter. It's got like this round silver handle and then like this teeny tiny little triangular blade and they're super, super sharp. So since my dad was in a hurry, he basically just picked the knife up and put it in the pocket of his jacket and we left. And we had a great time. It was at a pizza parlor and, you know, I was five and I was the coach's daughter. So a lot of the kids were just really sweet to me and like, oh, Erica, come sit by me and Erica, Erica, you know, I probably drove them nuts, but they were very tolerant. <laughs> so at the end of uh, the track banquet, I was, of course, exhausted, dramatic. I needed my dad to carry me to the parking lot. So he picks me up and he carries me out. And as soon as I get out in the parking lot, I'm like, "Ooh, let me down. I got to run around. So he goes to let me down and that X-Acto knife had popped a hole in his pocket and was sticking out about that far out of his pocket and just caught my the back of my thigh and just zhit, uh, cut that sucker wide open. And I ended up having 18 stitches. I mean, I, I can't imagine what my dad must have thought when he had to take me to the emergency room and say, yeah, I cut my daughter's leg open. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was a doozy. And I just remember I was healing from that and I was back in kindergarten uh, and I couldn't have a bandage wrapped around it because they wanted like the air to get to it so it could heal. And this little girl picked up a piece of the roof from a Lincoln log set. Those are just like little wooden toys that you can like build little Lincoln or Lincoln log cabins out of. <laughs> and she picked up, it's like made, the, the, the roof pieces are like made out of balsa wood. And she picked it up and just flacked me right in the leg and cut, popped a couple of my stitches open. I'd like to send her a little box of Lincoln logs. <laughs> just kidding. So yeah, that was uh, that was the next little foray into my injury. That looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another brush, this little Moda brush here, and I'm gonna go into this shade here, this kind of sage light green, and I'm gonna put that towards the front of my transition area. Okay, so the next injury, I am seven years old, I'm in second grade. It was almost the end of our second grade school year. And my teacher, Mrs. Frost, who I just loved her, and I love that name, that's such a cool last name, I think. If your last name is Frost, that's, a, that's amazing. Uh, but anyway, she had like a farm and like cornfields at her house and like they, her and her husband were beekeepers. So she took us, all the kids in her class, she took us on a field trip to her house. And she took us like on a tour of her corn maze. Uh, she had like this really cool uh, corn maze set up in the cornfield. It was really neat. They had like horses and cows. So we got to see them. And then her husband came out with like his full bee suit and um, kind of dealt with the bees. And then we all got a little jar of honey and we got to take that home. So at the end of the day, uh, I get home with my mom. She'd waited to pick me up. And my dad was already home and he was out swimming in the swimming pool in our backyard. We had like an above ground swimming pool that was like four feet deep and my dad had built this really cool deck all the way around it. It was gorgeous and really fun. And my next door neighbor, who was a little girl, she's a couple years older than me, is waiting in my driveway with her hands on her hips like this, very serious. And I'm like, okay. So I get out of the car. My mom's like, I'm going to go swim with your dad. Okay. I'm going to go over next door. And my next door neighbor girl says to me, we're going to become acrobats. And I was like, well, yeah, of course. I mean, what took you so long? You know, if somebody said that to me now, I'd be like, no, no, I'm going to go take a nap. You can do the acrobatics. See you later. But at that time, I mean, it was a totally reasonable, rational idea. Of course, acrobats. Yes. So we go in her backyard and she had a swing set. And, you know, there's that top bar of the swing set that kind of like holds all the swings. And then it's like those two kind of poles that go down each side of the, that main bar that like rest in the ground. And like you start swinging and the whole thing starts rocking. So she'd taken all the swings off of the top bar, right? And she had brought out a bar stool. So the goal was to get up on top of the bar stool 
and you were supposed to jump out, catch that main bar, swing back and forth as many times as you could, and then land like a cat in the grass. And then every time you did it, you'd move the bar stool further back away from the swing set. Yes, that's what we were doing. <laughs> I can't believe this. So eventually, and, and we were doing great at first. I mean, everything was fine. We were catching the bar. We were swinging back and forth. We were landing. I mean, we were like, oh my gosh, we're going to be the next circus sensation. I mean, we're going to be. And so pretty soon the bar stool is here and the swing set is here. <laughs> and I get up on the bar stool. I jump off and I remember my fingers like grazing the bar and I fell right to the earth. And of course you put your arms out and I broke my right wrist. <clears throat> just snap. And of course I hollered out and my mom told me that my dad, who was in the swimming pool at the time, jumped out of the pool, sprinted across the yard and hurdled the fence. Didn't like climb up the fence or hoist himself. I mean, literally hurdled it. It was like seven feet tall. <laughs> so the next thing I know, my dad's in the yard with me and he's, you know, kind of assessing the damage and Obviously my arm's broken. Let's see, I think that looks good, except for I think I am going to go back in just a little bit with this brush in this darker shade and just kind of make sure that looks a little bit more defined. They get a towel and they wrap my arm in a towel and it get an ice bag and just kind of make sure that it's all nice and uh, iced. And they put me in the car and race me to my pediatrician's office, which I don't know why they didn't just take me to the emergency room. I, I guess they just needed confirmation that my arm was broken. I mean, it looked awful, it was broken. But okay, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying why well, I don't get it. So we get to the emer or the doctor's office, pardon me. And this man has been my pediatrician since birth. And I love this guy. I mean, I, re I have such fond memories of him. He was a great doctor. And I remember sitting in the exam room and him coming in and saying, oh, honey, can I please take your towel off so I can look at your arm? And I looked at him, my seven-year-old self, and I said, no, you jackass. My mom's like, Erica, I think I am going to go put a little bit of this uh, kind of satin down, kind of towards that um, outer color there. Ooh, it's kind of like a rusty coppery shade. This is really pretty. I'm going to put that down right here. Ooh, yeah. Just to add some kind of shine to that part of the look here. Anyway, so he did confirm that, yes, my arm was broken. I did go to the emergency room. They set my arm. And it took a really long time for that to heal. I was in a cast all summer. And this happened, oh, like, I don't know, towards the beginning of June. And I was in a cast until the following October. So it took a long time for that to heal for some reason. I don't know. So, yeah, those were my little fun injuries. Ugh. And next, I handed the reins over to my son. And he's the youngest of the two. My daughter's three years older than he is. So he was five at the time. And we'd gone to a park to visit his uh, paternal grandmother. And there were monkey bars at this park. And monkey bars are just magnets for little boys. And they're magnets for injuries. So, and now I'm going to go into this beautiful shimmer here. This is just this kind of light green, beautiful shimmer. And I'll put that down towards the front of my lid. And basically, he wanted to go across the monkey bars. Of course he did. And I was just like, okay, but be very careful. And Brayden has always been a really tall, big kid. But even standing on the platform to jump out to catch the first monkey bar, he was quite a ways away from the monkey bar. And he jumps off. I'm sitting on a bench watching all this. Sydney's over on the swings or slide or whatever, playing like a nice little soft sweet child and Brayden's like I'm doing the monkey bars so he jumps off his fingertips graze the bar very similar to my swing set acrobat story and he goes plummeting to the earth and snaps his right wrist no his left wrist and I was just like oh no and he's you know hollers out like an animal in a trap and I'm just like oh shit so I go running over there now I'm holding oops I have fuzz on my brush I'm holding my car keys in my hand now remember that little detail so I get there to him and it's obvious his arm is broken and he has what's called a compound fracture. So a little piece of his bone is like protruding kind of like out like this. That ended up like the, like the muscle or whatever kind of pulled that back in. So by the time the paramedics and stuff got there, that was not an issue anymore, but it, it was pretty ugly to see. So basically uh, I'm like, okay, well, I, I need to go get my cell phone because I'm going to call an ambulance because I, did, I didn't want to move him. I mean, I could have, but I just didn't want to. Plus I had, the, had this really cool program where you could pay like this monthly fee and if something happened, you could have an ambulance come for free. So I thought, hey, I'm going to put that to good use finally. 
I could not find my car keys to go get my cell phone out of my car. And my daughter's like, mom, you're holding your keys. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. So get my keys out or, you know, walk over to the car, get my cell phone out, but I'm standing there and I'm staring at the cell phone and I can't see it. And she's like, mom, it's right there. So anyway, call the ambulance. They get there, get him into the back. We take off and he really pretty much immediately falls sound asleep. And so I asked the paramedic, does he have brain damage? And they're like, well, did he hit his head? And I'm like, uh, and Sydney's like, no, mom, he didn't hit his head. And he's like, no, he's in shock and it's okay. Uh, his body has just kind of decided that it's had enough of this and don't worry about it. He's, he will be fine. I'm like, okay. So yeah, they ended up sending his arm. Everything was fine. He had a cast on for like, I don't know, six to eight weeks. Everything healed great. Um, his ulna was fractured completely and his radius had what's called a green stick fracture, which is like, you know, if like you pick up a brand new stick and you break it and it doesn't break completely in half, but it's broken, but it's still kind of together. That's how that was. So his arm healed pretty quickly, actually, which is great. So that was his little broken arm story. So now we go to my daughter. <sighs> so it was her first real day of sixth grade. So she was 11. Actually, the day before they had started school, but they only had the sixth graders go for like the first half of the day. And then they have um, the seventh and eighth graders go the last half. So she had had her first day where they just had the sixth graders go in the morning and she'd gotten her locker and she was all excited about it. And it was just, it was great. She was just super thrilled. So now I think I'm going to go into this shade here just a little bit and kind of um, just blend this out a little bit just because it looks a little harsh to me. So the second day of school, which was when all of the kids would get, were going to be there, I could not get her to school in time because um, I had to be at work really early. So I dropped her off at my mom's house, her and Brayden both, and she was going to take them to school for me, which was wonderful. Really, I really appreciated that. And I get to work and um, it's like just a little after eight and the phone rings and it's my mom. Now, if I don't handle a crisis well, my mom is me times like 20, okay? She was horrible. <laughs> she would just like absolutely lose her mind. And we'd be like, mom, relax, it's gonna be okay. But this time I answer the phone and she's super calm, like freakishly calm. And she says to me, Sydney has broken her arm. Um, she's fallen in the bathroom and she's broken her arm and the ambulance is on its way and we'll meet you at the hospital. I think I suggest you leave and come on down to the hospital. And I'm like, are you sure she broke her arm? Yes, I'm positive she's broken her arm. And I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> You're awfully calm, mother, I don't get it. So I go, okay, mom, that's great, uh, I will be there. So I race to the hospital, I get there, and oh, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Peach Perfect in the shade Warm Nude, I love this foundation so much. And um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I use the Dewy Primer, the Wet n Wild Dewy Primer, uh, I put that down first, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. I love this primer so much, and I love the combination of these two, because I just think they're really fun, and this is kind of a matte foundation, so that definitely kind of makes it more skin-like, the uh, primer. So I, like I say, I race to the hospital, get there. I go into Sydney's room in the emergency room and she is on a bed and she's sobbing and in a lot of pain. And they're trying like not to give her a bunch of pain medication because they have to set her arm and like they have to like give them propofol and it's uh, pretty intense. And so they don't want to like, you know, give them too much uh, narcotic because <laughs> they're little. Um, and she, you know, she was 11, but still, you know, a little girl and I noticed that they have her arm in a, uh, like a, it's like a canvas type towel. And it's, they're actually really cool. And they fill up, they're like, have this iced gel on the inside and they get super cold. Like you break the gel up and it's super cold. Um, so it's like lightweight, but it's got the ice that she needed. So they, she, her arm is in that. Now it's very deceiving because her hand is laying completely flat and it's covered by this canvas thing. And I asked the nurse, can I, and you know, I'm, I'm tending to her, of course, and telling her it's all going to be okay, and I love her, and, you know, we'll get it fixed, and, and she's, no, it was horrible. So I asked the nurse, can I look at her arm? And she said, yeah, but I'd really rather Sydney not look at it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. And she says, um, and you need to prepare yourself because it's, it's pretty bad. And I'm like, okay. So she lifts off the canvas, a uh, little bag or towel thing, and Sydney's hand, put this down for a second, Sydney's hand is flat, her elbow's flat, 
but this part of her arm, like the hairy part of her arm, is turned completely sideways, so it's facing that direction. And then her arm is bent in towards her body, like an, it looked like a knee was coming out of her arm. And I was just like, whoa, whoa. So like, I, yeah, I almost lost it. I had to like grab a hold of the rail on the bed. I mean, it was just so bad, it was so bad. A doctor came in and tried to set her arm as best as they could. I mean, I don't know why they don't have like orthopedic doctors on staff in the emergency room all the time here, but they don't. So she did the best that she could and really, really nice doctor. And basically what she said was, you know, the, we have a really good, a great orthopedic clinic here in town. And she said, they're going to get a hold of you soon. And they did like, I think we'd been out of the hospital for maybe an hour and they called me and got her set up for the following day to meet with an orthopedic surgeon. So we go home and Sydney and Braden both do not do well on pain medication. It makes them throw up. They get super nauseous. So they had called in an, a prescription of Phenergan for her as well, which is like an anti-nausea, which, oh, concealer. I'm using the Color Prep, Color Prep, Color Pop, Pretty Fat, fra okay. I'm using the Color Pop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. And I love this stuff. I just got this not too, well, yeah, I just got this stuff not too long ago. I guess it hasn't really been in my box of shame. And uh, I'm in love with it. Ooh, so cool. Um, so they had called her in a prescription of Phenergan. Thank God, because she would not have slept that whole night. I mean, I know she wouldn't have. She was in so much pain because the doctor was not really able to set her arm. I mean, she did the best she could with what she had. But when we got to the orthopedist the following day and they did an x-ray, her bones were set like this, like that. So, I mean, her body was just going, uh, no, this is not right. This hurts. Stop. So, yeah, it was horrible. Um, and I just felt so awful for her. So awful. So, like I said, we go to the orthopedist the next day. And the doctor just said, I, I can't leave her arm like this. I mean, it's so unstable. It's causing her so much pain. We're going to have to do surgery like right now. And he goes, I'm going to go make some arrangements to kind of clear my day off. And we're just going to do this now because it's really an emergency type situation. And I'm like, okay, wonderful. So basically what they did was they put two titanium rods in her arm, one in the ulna and one in the radius. And they put it like down the middle of the bone. So they went in uh, on this bone in her elbow right here and then put the tiny titanium rod all the way up to her wrist. And then on this side, they went in from her wrist to her elbow. She had those rods in her arm for a year. And then they basically took those out um, a year later and they just went in and removed them. And then she had to wear like a splint, like a mesh type of splint, like brace on her arm for several weeks after she had those removed because it takes a while for the bone marrow to kind of grow back in. She could, she didn't have to have it on when she was home, but she had to have it on at school. And I think, I want to say she, was she playing soccer? I can't remember. She may have been playing soccer at this time. I, can't, I just don't remember. But anyway, she had to have it on. Anytime that she wasn't at home, she had to have it on and she didn't have to sleep in it. And I just remember a couple of weeks after she had those rods removed, I was in the kitchen making dinner and she was standing next to me in the kitchen and I looked down at her elbow and she had like a little blister where her stitches were on her elbow. And I said, is that bothering you? And she goes, it doesn't really hurt. She goes, it just kind of feels funny. And I said, well, you're not picking at your stitches, are you? <laughs> like, you know better. And she's like, no, mom, I'm not. She's like, I don't know what that is. And I said, well, let's just kind of keep an eye on it. So a couple days passed and that spot just got worse looking. And it was like, almost looked like a little zit. Um, like it had like a white head on it. And it was her elbow was really red and very hot to the touch. And I'm like, great, she's getting an infection. So I called the doctor's office, take her in, and she had an abscess there because her body was rejecting the stitches. <laughs> of course it was. Why wouldn't it, you know? I mean, I just was like, what else is going to go wrong here? So they had to remove the stitches, and they basically had to, like, put little staples in uh, until that healed. And her scar was horrible. Um, I don't know if I've already mentioned this, but we keloid really bad. My kids and I, all three of us do when we have scars, um, you know, that kind of like almost gristly looking scar tissue. That's what happens. We get like really lumpy, bumpy scars and those looked pretty gnarly for quite a while. Um, I don't think they really are that bad anymore, but they were pretty bad for quite a while. They looked, I felt so bad for her. She just had this like 
yucky ugh, coming out of her elbow. But you know, everything healed fine. Um, and actually I took one of the titanium rods and I uh, had a bracelet made out of it for her. <laughs> she, at first she thought it was really gross. She's like, I'm not gonna wear that. It was in my arm. And I'm like, Sydney, like, it's cool. It's, it's jewelry. It was something that was, you know, helped you and now it's jewelry. So now she thinks it's cool, but at the time it kind of freaked her out. So the last little story here uh, is my son. He took the reins back. It was his summer before his eighth grade year and he played football all through like middle school and high school and he was so excited because uh in eighth grade that's when they kind of start practicing with the high school kids and he was like so excited to do that and could not wait to start and they were getting new coaches and he was just so excited and thrilled and just yeah couldn't wait we were just kind of waiting for football camp to start it was like i don't know probably the middle of august and Brayden at this point in his life liked to longboard, similar to a skateboard, but it's longer, hence the name. Wow. And um, he wasn't doing this like, it wasn't like he was trick skating or anything. He basically just did it as a, a mode of transportation, like from point A to point B. But the one rule in the house was you will wear a helmet. And if you don't wear a helmet, you're not going to have your longboard. Okay, mom. Okay. So there were two incidents where... Um, and I'm sure there were more than two, but the two that he got caught, he left the house on his longboard, like to go to a friend's house. I mean, he wasn't like going all over the place. It was just like to friend's house, to the pool, to the park, you know, pretty close range around our house. And um, I get a phone call from one of my friends one day after he just left that he was riding down the street without a helmet on. So the first time that happened, I took it, I grounded him from his longboard for a week. And then the second time, same exact friend caught him again. Um, like, I think it was like the day after he'd gotten his longboard back. I'm like, dude, what? So, okay, second time he loses his uh, longboard for a month. Oh, I was just like, Braden, dude, come on. So he gets his longboard back, finally gets his longboard back. And I told him, if you do this again, you will never have the longboard, never. And so he's like, okay, I promise I'll wear my helmet. So uh, this one day I go to work and um, I get a phone call from him, my son, at about oh, 10 o'clock in the morning. And he says, my friend, the same friend who he and his friend stomped on the Capri Sun and sprayed it all over that wall, same friend. <laughs> His mom uh, is here and she's gonna take us to the mall so that she can get her nails done and we're gonna skateboard around while she gets her nails done and then I'm gonna just go spend the night at her house. Is that okay? And I said, that's fine, but let me talk to her. So she got on the phone and I said, he has to wear a helmet or he's done doing this. And she goes, oh no, no, my son has to wear a helmet too. I totally understand. I'll make sure they have their helmets on. I'm like, okay, thank you. So. I say, okay, have a good time. I love you. Uh, let me know when you get to his house. I will, mom. Love you too. Click. Now I'm going to go into my powder. I'm going to powder. And I am going to use my Cody Airspun because I love it. I love it. Um, my daughter says it smells like old lady armpits. And I always say, how do you know what my armpits smell like? <laughs> so I get a phone call about 45 minutes later. And it's a paramedic from the local fire department. And he says, hi, ma'am, um, I'm with your son at the mall, and he has broken his ankle. And I'm like, of course he has. And I said, well, is he okay? Like, can I talk to him? And he's like, well, he's afraid to talk to you because he's afraid he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And I'm like, oh, geez. I'm like, no, he's not in a lot of trouble. Like, you know, yeah, I'm not happy that he broke his ankle, but what am I going to do? I mean, he could have been walking across the street and broke his ankle, like I almost did when I was in high school. So, you know have to be understanding of these things. And I'm like, no, 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 I just, can I please talk to him? Cause you know, I was worried about him, he's my son. So he gets on the phone and he's crying, I'm so sorry, mom. And I'm like, Brayden, it's okay. You don't have to be sorry. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, this is awful. And he said, I, what am I gonna do about football? And I said, you know, we'll deal with that later. I mean, let's not worry about football right now. Let's just get you dealt with. So I tell him I love him and um, that, you know, have them take you to the hospital and I'll see you there. So the paramedic get, gets back on the phone and he asked me which hospital, because we have two here um, in town. And I tell him which one, and he says, it's a good thing that we're dealing with a broken ankle because we could have been dealing with a skull fracture. He didn't have a helmet on. Mm -hmm. So those little farts had gone around the corner to do their skateboarding where the mom couldn't see them and both had taken their helmets off. So 
just just a little side note here. My mom, as I'm in the hospital with my son dealing with his ankle, goes to my house, goes out in my garage, and totally strips Braden's longboard. <laughs> like took took everything apart, took the wheels off, the trucks off, everything, and it's actually still in a box in the garage. It's too funny. So I get to the hospital. Now I'm going to go into my bronzer. This is the Maybelline City Bronzer. My beautiful dear friend Alinka recommended this to me, and it has become my absolute favorite bronzer. Mm, I love it. Um, but anyway, uh, I get to the hospital. And, you know, his ankle, it looked broken, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't the mess that Sydney's arm was. So anyway, I got there and, you know, he's, he's in tears and he's all upset and he's in a lot of pain. Um, and so the doctor says, um, I'd like for you to step out of the room because I need to set his ankle and this is going to be really awful. So can you please step out? And I'm like, sure, no problem. So I get out in the hallway and I look back in at him and he looks at me and says, please don't leave me in here. <laughs> Oh, I was like, okay, dude, I'm going to woman up. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to be with you while I set your ankle. And basically what the doctor did, wonderful doctor, wonderful emergency room doctor. I love her. I, I run into her all the time and she's just such a neat lady. Anyway, she basically took my hair is like, rah, um, she took, put one hand like under Braden's knee and the other hand under his heel picked his leg up and like kind of cocked it like a shotgun. And then you could hear it just go click, click. And then she just laid his ankle, laid leg down. Ugh. And they had given him like, you know, whatever to kind of knock him out so that he wouldn't know what was going on, um, which was very short lasting. But anyway, yeah, so that was just horrifying. So they get him in like a half plaster cast that's wrapped in a ACE bandage in the way they send him home. And he... You know he's in pain again we have to give him the medicate the pain medication with Phenergan because he'll just barf it up so um after a few hours things started getting really intense for him he was just in excruciating pain excruciating pain now the concern the concern for him is that he could get what's called compartment syndrome which my cousin's son had he broke his leg playing football and basically what happens is when your muscle swells because i mean his foot was so swollen his foot his ankle his leg were just huge i mean he ended up having these huge blisters all over the top and bottom and his toe of his foot and his toes because there was so much fluid inside that like his skin ended up like filling up with fluid I mean, i've never seen anything like that um, I'm going to go into this blush. This is the Kaleido, not to be confused with Kaleidos, cosmetics blush. Um, this is the shade Prima Donna, and I love this shade. I thought this would look nice with the eye look. Um, oops, and I got it in an Ipsy, and I just really like using this blush. I love it. I love it. That's the theme. But the concern was that he would develop, like I said, what's called compartment syndrome. And basically what that is is that the muscles get so swollen and they're covered by the fascia, fascia. Um, the like, let me move this mirror back a little bit. Um, it's like the sac around the muscles and that doesn't really give at all. Um, and what can happen, what happened to my, uh, cousin's son is that it starts to basically kill the muscle tissue and, uh, you know, you can, you, you can basically lose the use of your leg. And my cousin's son ended up having to have like most of his calf, part of his uh, quad and half of his foot removed because this compartment syndrome just went out of control and it just started like, basically turning his muscle into like necrotic dead tissue that wasn't going to work anymore. So it was really sad. And I didn't want that for my 13 year old son. You know, I didn't want that. So anyway, uh, the emergency room, when I called them, they basically just said, bring him back down here and we'll figure out what's going on. So we get down to the emergency room and they made my son sit in a wheelchair for four hours before they dealt with him. And I, I just want to make this very clear. I did not handle that well at all. I kept going up and asking and they kept saying, well, we're really busy. We're really busy. And, um, you know, and then finally Braden like fell asleep in the wheelchair because he, you know, had had pain medication and Phenergan. So he just kind of, <clears throat> but then he woke up again and was just writhing around in pain. And I basically, you know, kind of made a jackass out of myself and went up and said, you know, you either get him back there in about five minutes or I'm going to sue you personally. I said this to the girl that was behind the desk that she was a wreck, but anyway. 
I don't need to go on and on and on, but yeah, it was just, oh, and now I'm going to go into the Ofra highlighter. This is in the shade Glow Goals. This is one of my favorite highlighters. I love it so much. Let me grab a brush. Um, so anyway, they finally got him back. And basically what was wrong is that the ace bandage that was wrapped around his splint was too tight. So it took her about 30 seconds to loosen it up and he was sound asleep. We left. Everything was fine. I mean, that's all they needed to do. And we sat there for four hours. I was like, eh. So the next day we went to the orthopedic surgeon, uh, very similar to what we did with Sydney. And at this place they have, you know, ankle specialists, knee specialists, hips, shoulders, necks, backs, everything. And the ankle guy was amazing. He looked like he was about eight years old. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? How old are you? But he was wonderful. And um, he basically just said, you know, uh, your son's fracture is right through his growth plate. So we can't, this is very unstable. Again, can't leave this alone uh, more than we have to. And he said, now, normally I would wait several days and let the swelling come down. He said, because the swelling is just going to get out of control for him. He said, but we can't leave his ankle like that. So they took him back for surgery. Um, he was in surgery for four and a half hours. And they told me he'd be in surgery for an hour and a half. So I was panicked. My mother was panicked. Everybody was panicked. Um, but when they he finally got out of surgery, the doctor came out and just basically said, you know, he, he'll be fine. Um, I put a plate and seven screws into his ankle, which the I wish I had a picture of that to show you guys. I really would like to show you a picture of that because it's, it's pretty insane looking. Um, and he still has that hardware in his ankle to this day. It does not bother him at all. Um, it was, you know, it was a pretty, you know, hard recovery. He had to lay on the couch for like, I think two weeks straight and then slowly kind of get up and use crutches. And then he had a walking boot. And, you know, my son is not somebody that likes to sit still. So that, that was really, I mean, it was really depressing for him. And he, like I said, he does not do well on narcotic pain medication. And, you know, he had to be on it because he was in, I mean, he didn't have to be, but he was in a lot of pain. So he was very emotional for those two weeks that he was on the couch and um, we watched tons of movies together. We watched the movie Braveheart, which is now his favorite movie. And it was so funny because, I mean, he cried during that movie. I mean, we both do. I mean, I've never watched that movie and not cried. And I remember Sydney coming down the stairs and we just finished watching it. And I told her, I said, we just got done watching Braveheart. And she goes, freedom! And Brayden's like, shut up, Sydney! <laughs> like starts bawling. It was so funny. So, yeah, but he healed just fine from that. It was amazing that he healed as well as he did. Um, but yeah, he played all, f he didn't play his eighth grade year, uh, football, but he played all four years of high school and did a great job. And the only time that really bothers him is if it gets cold, that metal gets cold and that will kind of ache. But other than that, I mean, they're both, all three of us are very lucky <laughs> that we're not like in a permanent body cast. All right. So I'm going to finish up my look, add some finishing touches, and I'll be right back to show you the finished look. So don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm back and this is the finished look. I love how this look turned out. I love all of the products that I used. I mean, that was the whole point of the video is to show you products that I absolutely love using and these are those. Um, I'm gonna go over a few things that I used in this look quickly with you. Uh, for my liner, I just used this to in my waterline and then to tight line my eyes. This is the Morphe Color Pencil in the shade All Night. It's just this really nice um, kind of mauve brown uh, eyeliner and I really enjoy using this. I have a couple of these and kind of forgot I had them and then started using them again over the last couple of months and I just love them. They, they stay in my waterline really well and they stay on my eyelid really well as, as well. Um, that was a tongue twister. And then for my mascara, I'm gonna see if you guys know what it is. I'll give you, give you a minute, talk amongst yourselves. It's the Essence Lash Princess. Of course it is. I mean, why would it not be? I love this mascara so much. And it was really cool when my daughter and I did our Holy Grail makeup. She had one too. <laughs> Good girl. And then for my lips, I used the Revlon Bullet Lipstick in the shade 525 Wine with Everything. Um, this is just a gorgeous bullet lipstick. It's just a really nice kind of purpley red shade. I thought it would look good with the eye look. And I love these. I got like a set of these at TJ Maxx. Oh gosh, a couple months ago. And I really enjoy using these when I go to work. They do kind of come off in my mask sometimes, but you know, they're gorgeous. And why am I wearing lipstick if I have to wear a mask all day at work? I don't know. I just feel weird if I don't put lipstick on. It just seems like it's like half done. And I just like to punish myself. And then for the gloss over the top, I use the Dose of Colors Gloss in Almond Butter. This is my favorite gloss. I love this. It's so comfortable. And I think it looks gorgeous on the lips. And 
Um, you know, it doesn't last that great if you're going to be like eating or drinking or whatever. I mean, what gloss does, but I just think it's really, really pretty and I love this so much. So yeah, that was my video. I hope you guys enjoyed the look coming together. I hope you guys enjoyed the products that I used. If these are products that you love, please share that with me. And even if you don't like them, you can share that with me too. I would love to just chat makeup. That would be wonderful. And I hope you also enjoyed listening to my stories about my family's accident proneness. Uh, like I said, it's a miracle that we're not in a permanent body cast. Uh, we've all healed well from all of our injuries and we have lived to see another day. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day or evening to sit down and watch my video and listen to this craziness that is my family. Uh, it absolutely means the world to me. If you have subscribed or you would like to subscribe, please do not forget to hit the notification bell. That way you're aware of all of my future uploads. I really look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. But in the meantime, please take care of yourselves. Be well, safe, happy, and I cannot wait to see you again. Take care, you guys. Thanks again. Bye.